go. Today I want to talk about a problem that's going on to churches today, on the internet, all this stuff. I mean, people are, people are putting revival under a microscope. Oh, well, we have to check the spirits. If people are repenting and getting saved and believing on Jesus, then aren't they saved? I mean, do we have to, does everybody have to sit back with a little uh, notebook and, and analyzing everybody's life to make sure they got saved the right way? You're not going to believe people get saved without going through all that? That's, that's ridiculous. By, your fruit, by their fruits you shall know them, Jesus yes. said. Amen. Amen. And when a, a revival starts spontaneously, it wasn't said some preacher going, okay, we're going to have revival this week. That's, that's not even in the car. That's not even in it. It's not being hosted by a human being. It's being hosted by the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Amen? Amen. Okay, so there's a little wildfire here, a little wildfire there. It doesn't matter. Better the fire than no fire at all. Because there will be real fire, right? We want the real fire. Amen. Amen. And when the fire is burning, you'll say, well, you know, there's a fire in the fireplace, but I don't know if I'm going to go up and warm at it yet because I don't know if it's a real fire. Mm. I mean, people are getting ridiculous, all right? But, but those who know the Lord aren't sitting back. They, people are not even glad that people are stopping and, and, and filling up the chapels to praise God and worship the Lord. Yes, amen. They'd rather have them out... Uh, like Antifa and these other groups protesting in the streets and burning down buildings? Really? We should be glad that the young people are turning to God, should we not? Amen. Hallelujah. All right, but then we got to go, well, we have to see if they <coughs> repent. People don't even know what the word repent means. Well, I looked it up in a uh, Greek di dictionary, and it said all these things. It only means one thing. It means exactly what the Greek word said. To change your mind. It also means to return. That's all it means. It, the definition of repent does not stop sinning. If you repent, that will be the result, ultimately, because, but we're not talking about just repenting. Stopping sinning will not save you. And no sinner can stop sinning until he's born again. Do we get agreement yeah. on that? Yeah. Amen. So when did I change my mind? The moment I believed. On the Lord Jesus. Amen. Not the moment I said a sinner's prayer. Nowhere in the Bible does it prescribe us to say a sinner's prayer. Right. Do you find it anywhere in the Bible? Mm -mm. And people say, okay, now repeat after me. All right? Uh, let's look at this for a minute, because if you go to Acts chapter 10 in your Bible, where Peter is preaching to the household of Cornelius, we've already gone over and covered this before. Peter is preaching to the household of Cornelius, who was an Italian officer in the Roman army, and his family wanted to hear the good news. And so Peter starts preaching to him about Jesus, how the God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing everybody that was oppressed by the devil. All right, that's pretty good so far. And then in verse 39, he said to them, We are witnesses of all these things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Okay, what's he preaching? He's preaching the cross, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's preaching the cross, Christ's death on the cross. Element number one. <laughs> must believe that he died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead, but which we're going to get to in just a moment, mm -hmm. to testify that it is he who is ordained of God. All right, in verse 42, he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was appointed by God to do what? To judge the living and the dead. All right, so what did God give Christ the authority to do? To determine who would be saved and who wouldn't be saved. Mm -hmm. And Christ determined that whosoever would call on his name would be born again. Yes. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. But they had to first believe in their hearts, which we're going to get into in just a moment. Okay? They had to believe. Didn't say anything about it. They had to repent. The moment you believe, you have repented of your unbelief. Have you not? Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. Verse 43. To Jesus, all the prophets give witness 
that it, that it was He. All right? That it was He. They all give witness. What did all the prophets testify? That through His name, the name of Jesus, whosoever believes in Him. Whosoever what? Believes. Believe. Whosoever believes in who? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. Whosoever believes in Him shall receive the remission of sins. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. How are my sins washed away? By doing what? Believing. By believing. It's faith. How, have you, how do you obey the gospel? By doing what the gospel told you to do. What's the good news tell you to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Isn't that what Paul told the jailer in Philippi? Yes. Who said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Peter, Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't say, turn away from all your sins, go into your house and throw away all your booze and, and get rid of all your pornography and all these other things and then God will save you. Oh, really? So you can merit your salvation by you being righteous, doing your own works, right? It's, no, you Amen. can't. <laughs> Amen. You have to believe. There is no salvation without believing. The moment you believe, you have repented. Repented of what? Unbelief. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus said when the yes. Spirit of truth comes, He will convict the world of sin. He convicts the world of sin, right? Oh yeah, see there, you have to repent. He convicts the world of sin. Why? Because they don't believe on me, Jesus said. Yes. Of sin because they believe not on me. Right? Yes. So, the whole reason the world is condemned under their sins is not because they haven't repented of their sins, but because they haven't repented of one sin. And that's the sin of unbelief. And what does it mean to repent of that sin of unbelief? It means to change your mind and start believing. Amen. Right? Yes. Okay. Because if your salvation depends upon your... If repentance means to stop sinning, then you'll never know when you're saved because mm -hmm. you may sin next week. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. I can determine I'm stopping sinning, but that doesn't mean I won't ever sin again. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and so if God doesn't save you until you stop sinning, then you have to wait till your life is over to find out if you <laughs> stop sinning. And then God will save you? Now we're going back to the law, right? <clears throat> right. <clears throat> you can't have it both ways. Okay. So, he said, Whosoever believeth, say it, believeth, believeth, in him shall receive remission of sins. And while Peter yet spoke these words, they all went to the altar and they prayed the sinner's prayer with them. Oh, Father, God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. I'm guilty. I've done all these sins. Please save me. Come into my heart and change my life. Is that what they? Is that, was that what he did? No. Mm -mm. While he was still preaching these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them all who heard the word. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing. What were they hearing? The word of the Lord. What was the word of the Lord? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Mm -hmm. God so loved the world that whosoever repenteth, <laughs> whosoever believeth. It's all about believing. Believing. When they were letting the, the, the man down through the roof who needed healing, who was crippled. Jesus seeing their faith. <laughs> said to the sick of the palsy, your sins are forgiven you. The sick man didn't, re didn't say any sinner's prayer. Amen. Why was he forgiven? Because Jesus saw their what? Faith. Believe. Faith. Mm -hmm. Faith believing is synonymous. Is it not? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. <laughs> what were they believing in? They were believing in that man that was in that house mm -hmm. preaching. Jesus Christ, the Son of the mm -hmm. living God, they believed that He was the healer. Amen. That He was the Savior. Amen. And not only was He healed, but His sins were forgiven. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to say a sinner's prayer. He didn't go down to the man and say, Okay, now, you know you're a sinner, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're a sinner. And so therefore, I want you to confess to me your sins. Oh, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been three months since my last confession. Is that what He did? No. <laughs> That's what we did in the Catholic Church when we go to confession. Amen. 
The moment you believe on the Son of God, you are born again. Amen. 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 For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And then the what, what's in the abundance of the heart comes out the mouth. Once you're saved in the heart, you'll start confessing Jesus, will you not? Yes. With your mouth? Amen. All right. So, Peter didn't say a sinner's prayer with them. He didn't even tell them to repent. Mm -hmm. He didn't even say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But they were believing on Jesus already. God knows when a man believes and when he doesn't believe. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. God who searches the hearts. Mm -hmm. Don't make the word repent mean what the Western world has assigned the definition to. And once a man is born again and believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, he will stop living a life of sin. Amen. Habitual sin. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, amen. All right. It's that simple. Now if we go, go to, uh, back to Romans chapter 10, what does he say? For the scripture saith in verse 11, Whosoever believeth, Whosoever believeth on him won't be ashamed, won't be disappointed. Why won't he be disappointed? Because God will keep his word and save him. Amen. God will make him righteous because he believes. Now, in verse 8, Paul asks the question, What does the scripture say? The word is near you. Where? How close is it? Well, it's in my Bible that I'm carrying. No. It's near you, even where? <laughs> in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And why is it in your mouth? Because it's in your heart. Verse 8. That is the word of faith, which we preach. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Mm -hmm. How shall people believe if they don't hear the message that you're saved by believing? Yes. Not because you stop sinning. It's not of works. Let's everybody should boast. Oh, I quit getting drunk. Oh, yeah, he quit getting drunk. God saved him because he stopped drinking. Is that why God saved you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. As soon as I got saved, I didn't, need to, I didn't need a preacher to tell me not to get drunk anymore. I didn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> I was changed. I was hearing about Jesus. I was going to church. I was hearing the good news about Jesus. People's lives being changed. All right, so you're not born again because you stop sitting. You're born again because you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you're compromising the gospel. No, I'm not compromising the gospel. Did Paul compromise the gospel? No. Well, he told the Philippian jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. He didn't say anything about repent. <coughs> the jailer repented. His heart was changed to believe. He repented of what? Unbelief. Mm -hmm. He started believing on Jesus. Well, in Acts chapter 238, <laughs> Peter was preaching to the Jews on the day of Pentecost. Repent! And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Did he use the word repent? Yes. Repent and get baptized in the name of Jesus. Change your mind about him. Peter had just got finished mm -hmm. telling them, you crucified the Prince of Life. What was he preaching? The cross. Yes. So what he was telling him is, You've rejected the man who was your Messiah. Mm -hmm. You need to change your heart and realize he was the Messiah. And the moment they believed what Peter was preaching them, they were born again. Amen. Amen. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All right. So they got, they got born again the moment they believed. They were already saved. Then they went to Peter and let Peter baptize them, right? Mm -hmm. And Peter didn't pronounce some formula over them. Oh, my brother, 
upon the confession of your faith, I baptize thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Or, nor did he say, I baptize you in the, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They didn't say what they said. The Bible doesn't tell us what they said as they were baptizing people. Peter just told them, in the name of Jesus Christ, you need to be baptized. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, so they all got immersed. What you say, well, you're baptized. If I'm getting baptized by a preacher, whatever that preacher says over me, by the time I come up out of the water, whatever he said, am I baptized? Yes. And I went down in there believing on Jesus, and I was doing it for Jesus. So I was being baptized unto Jesus, regardless of whatever a preacher said. Yes. Does that make sense? What people have to do is clear out of their brains all these other publications and books and videos and all these pontificating people that get up and make all these statements, and it's not even based in the Scripture. They get some scripture from the Old Testament. Well, the Bible said, if my people who are called by my name will turn from their wicked ways. Okay, well, how do I turn from my wicked ways? Mm -hmm. By believing on Jesus. Amen. Right? Not turn from your wicked ways and then God will save you. You turn from your wicked ways by turning to Jesus. Amen. All right, so what did he say? Verse 8, what does the scripture say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Not the word of repentance, the word of faith mm -hmm. which we preach. What faith? Faith in Jesus. Yes. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Amen. Paul doesn't even mention H2O here in Romans chapter 9. Well, unless you're baptized in water, your sins aren't washed away. Now there's more than one group that teaches that your sins are washed away when you're baptized in water. Uh, the Church of Christ, you're not born again until you're baptized in the Church of Christ. By a Church of Christ minister, that's the Church of Christ. Then you have the oneness group who don't believe in the Trinity, they tell you that until you're baptized in water, your sins won't be washed away. Water doesn't wash you. Hello. Amen. Paul is giving us the <laughs> recipe for how a per the, the, the instructions of how a person is saved here. <coughs> he did not say that if you will go down under the water with someone saying, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you shall be saved. <coughs> say that. That's right. Well, Paul, you really missed out. Paul even wrote to the church of Corinth and said, Christ didn't send me to baptize, mm -hmm. but to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Really? Well, if, sal if, if salvation hinged on water baptism, then Paul would never have said such a thing. If he had been a church of Christ minister or a oneness preacher, he would never have made that statement. Christ sent me not to baptize. Because hell, I'm going to, Christ sent us to baptize people so that their sins would be washed away. I don't know what Bible you're reading, but that's not what this scripture says. He said, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, not if the minister shall confess with his mouth the Lord Jesus, but if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. So if you really want to get technical, you, it would make more sense to say, as I call on the name of Jesus and am baptized in the water. <laughs> but that's, that's not even what it says. He doesn't mention water. He doesn't mention H2O in this verse of scripture. He said, with the heart, not with the water. Not, as the Jews call it, the mikvah, the baptismal tub. It's not with the water. The baptism that a man is born again, or with the baptism that he believes unto righteousness, but he believes unto righteousness first. Now we can get baptized like Jesus did. Mm. Did Jesus have sin to wash away when he was baptized? No. No. So now we can go down under the water like Jesus did. We can go down without any sin in our life already because we've been born again. You can be baptized a thousand times and your sins aren't going to be washed away unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Okay, now we're looking at Paul's recipe for salvation. <laughs> if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. Well, I've got to sit back and determine whether they believe in their heart. I've got to sit back and determine if they believe God raised him from the dead. There's a revival going on. There's revivals going on in America today. More than one university, the young people are in church because they, God has touched their hearts and they want to give their lives to God. Yes, amen. It's ridiculous for a bunch of so-called Christians to sit back and try to analyze everything that everyone... I don't know. We need to test the spirits. Okay, sure. If they're up there preaching that Jesus Christ didn't really rise from the dead in the flesh, then we don't believe that they got saved, right? Because John wrote in his epistle, but he didn't call us to be skeptics. He's talking about a group of cultists that are going around trying to turn Christians into oneness and all these other groups, JWs and Mormons and all these other things. Then you need to test the Spirit. But when people are out there and they're testifying how that they had all these things in their life but God set them free from it, the devil didn't set them free. Amen. If the tree is bearing good fruit, it's a good tree. If it's bearing evil fruit, then it's not a good tree. Jesus made it plain. Yes. If people's lives are changed and they're excited and they have the joy of the Holy Ghost in their life and they're all rejoicing, well, that's just emotionalism. We have to be careful. Those people are just going into emotionalism. <clears throat> really? The Bible said the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Neither did it say it is an intellectual stoicism being a stoic, but it said the kingdom of God consists not of food and drink, but of righteousness, peace and joy. If you're walking around with a long face, I don't believe you have joy. That's an emotion, is it? Is joy an emotion? The Bible said Jesus rejoiced in spirit. Oh, he, he can't be the Messiah. He's caught up in some emotional display. Oh, those people are waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Oh, that's just a bunch of uh, fake things going on. Jesus didn't rebuke them. Jesus said, if these hold their peace, the very rocks are going to cry Amen. out. Amen. The rocks will get emotional, okay? Yes. They're not just going to confess, they're going to cry it out. Lord. Western Christianity has become delusional. That's why a lot of Western Christians, people who have been indoctrinated into Western Christianity, that's why they didn't even accept revival when it came. If you study revivals, when revivals came, the people who were praying for revival rejected it because it didn't match their theology. It didn't match their form of religion. But if it matches the Bible, that's all that matters. Amen, yes. All right, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you're going to be saved, Paul said. All right, for with the heart, not with the water, with the heart man believes to what? Righteousness. How do I become righteous? By getting baptized? No. No, by, by believing. By what? Believing. Why couldn't the children of Israel enter the promised land? Because of... Unbelief. Unbelief. Look, salvation hinges on one thing and one only. Either you believe or you don't. Amen. Either you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he died, yes. was buried, and rose again the third day for your justification. That's the only thing that's going to get you into the yes, doorway of heaven. Lord. Is believing that. Amen. I don't care how wet you are. <laughs> you don't believe that, you're not saved. Mm -hmm. Because that is the hinge that brings you into the kingdom, that opens the door. All right, verse 11, for the scripture says, whoever believes on him won't be ashamed. Verse 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to everybody that calls upon him. Mm -hmm. They're not going to call on him if they don't believe upon him. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, 
For whosoever, say it, whosoever, whosoever. shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall not be hopefully, saved. not maybe, shall. Mm -hmm. Christians have drifted away from the literal words of Scripture. Mm -hmm. They've drifted away from it. All right. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How, how's people going to call on somebody they don't even believe in? Mm -hmm. why, would you, why would you call on something you didn't even believe? Mm -hmm. You will, though, if you believe. Mm -hmm. Faith produces action, does it not? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, and so if you call on Jesus to set you free and save you, will he not mm -hmm. do it? Yes. Well, what if they didn't really mean it? That's ridiculous. How do I know you really meant it when you called on the name of the Lord? Mm -hmm. I didn't run around after you with a, a, a clipboard and, and a microscope and a telescope to follow you around to see if you really got saved. Paul said the Lord knows those who are his. Yes, he does. Amen. All right. By the fruit you shall know them. Right. Okay, so how will they call on those whom they, have, him, whom they haven't believed, and how shall they believe on him in whom they haven't heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? In other words, once the preacher preaches the word like Peter did there in Acts chapter 10 to the household of Cornelius, he preached the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and said, all the prophets are testifying. The Old Testament, the Tanakh, mm -hmm. is testifying that everybody that calls on his name who believes on his name, is what he said, mm -hmm. receives the remission of his sins. The lame man was let down through the roof, believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, so did his friends that brought him and carried him there. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Jesus didn't sit down and make the man go through a litany of all the sins he committed. Well, he has to confess his sins for him to be forgiven. The man was not in denial of his sins. He was looking for grace. He was looking for mercy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He had already repented or turned from his unbelief and believed that Jesus Christ was the one who was going to do it. People want to turn Christianity into some ritualistic 10-step or 3-step or 5-step process. People set themselves up as judges. I'm the great judge of who got saved and who didn't get saved. I don't even want to look at those videos. I don't even want to see them. I saw a video on YouTube the other day, the Asbury Revival is fake. Oh, really? This guy has become God now. And you know what they're going to do? He's going to put the slide rule of his denomination or of his ideas over the revival and criticize it. That's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees spent all their time doing, was criticizing Jesus. Oh, he healed on the Sabbath day. He can't be of God because he healed on the Sabbath day. Oh, this. Oh, how come you and your disciples don't fast like, like the elders and these other people do? You're too busy judging Christianity by what other people are doing and believing instead of going back to the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, not the opinion. Amen. And the Word was God. If you try to alter this Word, you're in trouble. Your faith is in trouble. Let God be true and everybody else a liar. There's people in Christianity today who only believe that Christ will forgive you of your sins, and some of them don't even believe that people get saved from their sins. And some people don't even believe that God will save everybody who believes. Oh, only those who are predestined to believe will be saved. Really? <laughs> so it's out, of my, it's out of your hands and my hands if that's the case, then nothing we do is going to either damn us or save us, right? Because God is the one, uh, and, he, and he, he's the only one, and his decisions are the only thing that save us or, or damn us. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. All right. So, what is faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ? 
I have repented toward God. I have changed my heart about God, and I believe that He really does have a Son, and that His name is Jesus, and that He was crucified on a cross, that He died, He was buried, and raised again the third Amen. day. The moment I believe that, I am saved. I Amen. have repented. Amen. Amen. <coughs> it's time for Christians to, to divorce themselves from Christianity, Western Christianity, and to go back to the Word of God. <coughs> the simple, plain truth of the Word of God. Yes, amen. Because until that happens, and I see it everywhere, oh, these people are repenting and coming to God. Okay, well, but that idea of repenting, why don't they just say they started believing? <laughs> They've stopped disbelieving, and now they're believing what, what's in their Bibles. And I say that because people don't know. The word in, in Greek and the word in Hebrew is not repent. It means a turning mm -hmm. of the heart, right? Yes. Why did God, why did the Bible say that God was going to judge this people, but then he repented of his, of his anger? It simply meant he changed his mind. Hello. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that you can't get saved until you stop sinning. That's right. Because if that's the case, you're not going to know if you're saved until mm -hmm. the end because you may sin next week. Mm -hmm. All right. The word is believed. Mm -hmm. And if you look up all the scriptures in John, whosoever believeth in him, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish. The focus is on Christ, believing on Christ, believing on Him who died, was buried, and rose again for our salvation. That is the crux of the whole matter. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Paul said, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because they were trying to change salvation into a list of things you have to start doing. And then you're not saved until you start doing this. Until you start doing that. Until you start doing the other. If it's all about doings, then, it, then we save ourselves, don't we? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad there's a revival going on in America. Amen. I pray that it spreads, Amen. and you should be praying that it spreads, Absolutely. that our young Amen. people are leaving drugs and alcohol Amen. and fornication and all these other things, that Amen. they're turning their hearts to God. They're not joining some church or denomination or some new religion. They're believing in Jesus. They're magnifying Jesus. It's all about Jesus, and it's not being orchestrated by men, but it's being orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we glorify your name. And we ask you to continue this revival. Let it hit the Nazarene campus over here. Let it hit the campuses here in San Diego. Let it move up into L.A. and all the areas round about. Let the students and the young people be converted and transformed into real believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, before you come back, prepare yourself a people for your name, that they may be saved and that they may be glorified, and that we may meet you in the air, for we believe your coming is very nigh, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. We worship you and we magnify your name today.